Hallelujah. You turn it on already? Wow. Anyway. She's ahead of me, that's fine. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, parents, please bear with us uh, and just stay with your children today. Hallelujah. Because I want others to enjoy what we're going to be sharing. Amen. 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 And uh, we always say, many, many years ago, we started doing CDs and uh, even with cassettes. If you work in a department and for some reason you cannot be in service whilst the work administration is going on, you are given a copy of the work administration. Some people call that sermon or preaching. All right, so you're given a copy. We started with cassette, then it's your responsibility to go listen to it. Why do we do that? We continue with the CD and we do the same with this uh, live stream. That if you miss it, you can get a CD or go to YouTube. It's easy. You know, make sure you listen to it or you watch it. Why do we do that? We have to be on the same page. That is one of the ways to foster understanding and unity in purpose or unity of purpose. It's very easy to be in agreement when you know the same thing. Do you understand? When you know the same thing, when you know the same truth. Yeah. But when one person knows it, the other doesn't know it, then the one who knows it wants to convince the other person why this is truth before then the agreement can show up. Because it says, how can two agree? How can two walk? I'm sorry. Except to be agree. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. So can we please also turn this AC thing to 72? So the people don't freeze, they can enjoy their summer. You see how they are dressed, they are not wearing coats, please. Hallelujah. They don't want to be in the freezer. All right. So hallelujah. We welcome viewers across the nations. This is Liberty House International Church. All the way from the U.S. We're coming to you live via Facebook and YouTube. In case you miss any portion of this broadcast, Please uh, go to our webpage, libertyhouseusa.org. Once again, libertyhouseusa.org. Or to our YouTube channel. Please type in Liberty House International Church. And then you can treat yourself uh, to the videos we have for your spiritual uh, enrichment. Thank you for studying alongside us. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. And my mission here is to push you forward. Amen. It's to help you or uh, help you advance in your relationship with the Lord and uh, the influence that God has given you to walk in that, to exert it. Hallelujah. Amen. To be a, what, an asset to society and not a liability. Yeah. In case I say something that doesn't uh, resonate with you, please don't pick a fight with me. We are not going to fight. I refuse to fight. Even if you choose to fight, I refuse to fight. My intent is not to cause any offense. So please relax and let's go into the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to touch on something that is very, very important. That is very key. And today we're taking communion. And we all know, according to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 24-25, the reason why we take communion is to do what? Why do we take communion? It's in remembrance of what Jesus has done. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Because uh, 1 Corinthians 5 says Jesus is our Passover. Amen. The Jews they were instructed to do the Passover for a memorial. For us, is Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we do it. Okay. Now, people have that for all kinds of reasons. They take communion for all kinds of reasons that the Bible has not stated. The one that is stated is uh, loud, is clear, is unambiguous. Nobody can add to it. But Christendom, in some circles, we are adding to it. You know, so some people say, okay, if you take communion every day, you'll be protected. We saw that many ministers were teaching that the COVID time for two years, this teaching was, uh, what do you call it, amplified. And it said that, read Psalm 91, 
And then, uh, what? Well, take communion every day and you are going to be protected. Some people rest on 91 and they uh, had communion every day and yet they were hit so bad by Corona. You know, so uh, where, where do we stand? It's not everything that comes from the pulpit is right or is in sync with the word. All right? And it's not everything that somebody says or refers to in the word must be practiced. It's the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. It is the word of God. Yeah. All right? Yeah. But some pieces, some portions are not to be practiced because some things have changed. Mm -hmm. With the coming of Jesus Christ, a lot has changed. Amen. Yes. And people don't know that a lot has changed yes. with the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All the prophets and the Lord, they pointed to Jesus. People prophesied and they were looking forward to the arrival, the advent of Jesus Christ. And he showed up. We were kept under the law, the mosaic, till Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we'll have faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now that he has come, he is the one in charge. He's the boss. Yeah. That's why we refer to it as the new covenant. That's what the Bible says. And there's so much mixture being preached and confusing people of God. And today I want to nail one of those things. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter 24. I was going to just start from the... Okay, let's start from one. So it will flow. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis... I'm sorry. Exodus. Exodus. I saw Abraham on the screen and I realized that no, that's not what I'm referring to. Exodus chapter 24. Uh -huh. Because we're going to talk about Moses. Hallelujah. Abraham, when we mention Abraham, Abraham is the guy who walked in faith. He didn't walk in the law. He didn't walk in the mosaic. He was before the law came into effect, the mosaic. He lived before Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. And then God used him as an example. And then that's why in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, we see him showing up. And the Bible talks about we coming under the blessings of Abraham or the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. And Bible refers to Abraham as the father of faith. He's the father of us all. That's what the Bible says. Moses is not mentioned. And I, I say these things on purpose. Because some people like to argue. For arguing sake. Even though they are hearing it from the word. Because their favorite or popular preacher said that. They have difficulty in changing their position. Even though their favorite or popular preacher is wrong. When we talk about some of these things, some people become defensive. And all that they say, why are you trying to attack this pastor? Why are you trying to judge this pastor? Why are you trying to criticize this pastor? No, it's about contending for the faith. We have to uphold truth. God has a standard. And that's what we stand for. So the person can be good. He can be nice. He, can, uh, he may have touched lives and all that done good to society, that doesn't mean he's above the word of God. That doesn't mean that he's alright and he has no flaws or he cannot make a mistake. That doesn't mean that um, what do you call it? He has he has arrived. Said that he knows the word of God to uh, in his fullness. No. So when they preach something, when they say something, when they teach something and it's not in line with the Bible, we have to call it out. And that's what we do. So if you don't correct it, a lot of people will hear that, they are going to practice, practice it, they will be erring. And every error, when it's uh, sustained, then attracts a demonic force to it. And that is why when people come under that kind of an error, it's difficult to get them out. Because it becomes a stronghold, it becomes part of their thinking, it becomes part of their belief system. And they become part of their value system and becomes a stronghold. Bible says that we cast down imaginations. Stronghold is not a demon somewhere. It's what you think. Especially error. Stronghold is error. Misbelief, disbelief, unbelief that you have incorporated into your life. That you, re you rely on, you depend on. That is what stands against you. It's not a demon. So Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Cast down what? Every imagination, arguments, sins, reasonings, and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 
How do you do that? By the word of God. Amen. Knowing truth Amen. and then changing your position. You accept the truth and then you let go of your own opinion or you let go of what your favorite uh, evangelist, uh, apostle, pastor, prophet taught you, but it's wrong. You let go of that. That doesn't mean you should hate him. doesn't mean that you shouldn't love him anymore. You should still love him. You should still respect him, but it was wrong on whatever he said. And that needs to be corrected. Hallelujah. Yeah. I always tell you that making mistakes is part of what? Growing up, maturing. The more mature you become, the less mistakes you make. So let's look at this thing well. The way they talk about the blood, the way they talk about protection. If you listen carefully to what I'm going to share with you today, and uh, as you wait the scriptures, that should settle a lot of concerns that you have for you in your life. Hallelujah. So in Exodus chapter 1, I'm sorry, Exodus 24, right? Chapter 24, reading from verse 1. Let's read together so at least I can get a kick out of it. Read. Then the Lord instructed Moses, come out here to me and bring what? Bring along Aaron, Nada, Abihu, and what? Seventy of Israel's elders. All of you must what? Worship from a distance. Let's read on. Two, read. Only Moses is allowed to come what? Near to the Lord. The others must not come near. And uh, none of the other people are allowed to all climb up the mountain with him. So some preachers who have not transitioned, they are still what? Uh, under the old. They are still married. Or they are committing adultery. They claim they are married to Christ, but they are still married to the law. Alright? So that's adultery. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? Spiritual adultery. Do you get it? That's why I refer to that as ex. They are still dealing with their ex. How can you be loyal that way? You can serve two masters. Alright? So they will take a scripture like this and say, look, we as men of God, as people, as ministers of the Lord, we are special. And they will read this to bully people. Under the Old Testament, you saw that it was like that. But under the New, according to Hebrews 12, we have all come unto Mount Zion. We have all come into the family of God as saved people. We all have access. Romans chapter 5 says that. 1, 2. We have access where we stand because Jesus, our faith in his finished work, has given us a right standing before God. That's why he calls us as sons. So no pastor, no apostle, no prophet, no evangelist, no pastor, no teacher has a word. Um, some privileges that you don't have or have access to God that you don't have access to the Father that you don't have we all at the end of the day what happened? We were all saved we were all cleansed by the same blood of Jesus Amen. and we are referred to as children or sons of God Amen. our functions may differ and they come with different uh, levels of authority but we've been given general authority to do what God wants us to do here. And that settles it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are told to respect one another or honor all. And that is it. Nobody is to demand more respect than the other. We are all to show respect towards one another. Amen. That's it. So don't let anybody bully you. They use uh, times, verses of scripture like, I'm the Lord's anointed. Do my prophets no harm. In this uh, covenant, the new covenant, we are all the Lord's anointed. Amen. Because we are the body of Christ. Amen. Jesus is anointed. We are all anointed. That is why I always say that if you you are a part of a local assembly and the pastor looks down on you and talks to you like you are nobody and uh, shows no honor, respect to you, that's not the right place. That pastor should not be doing what he's doing. He has to sit down to be trained all over again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you are precious in the sight of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And he has to treat you that way. Amen. Let's move on to the next one. Verse 3. Nobody should speak against any child of God. And some of them, they are so ignorant, they have the audacity. You see, it gets into their head when they are worshipping by people and they don't stop their congregants from worshiping them. 
Do you know what I'm saying? When they don't stop their confidence from worshiping them, it gets into their head. Before you realize, instead of saying, uh, God our Father, then they say, the socialist, I know you, you want to use my name. Then they say, oh, the, the, the God of Pharaoh. A son in the name of our father, our papa, and uh, the, the, the what? Uh, the God of our, uh, our papa, so and so. What, what is that nonsense? It's not pleasing. It's not worship. That needs to change. If you want to mention the name of God, you don't have to attach my name to it. Who am I? I'm only your servant. He called me to serve you. But we hear these things going, so that needs to change. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's move on. And they, don't, they don't want to be touched. Do what is right then. <laughs> well, where are we now? Verse 3. Then Moses went down to the people and repeated all the instructions and uh, now I'm on my own. And regulations the Lord had given him. <laughs> Let's continue from all. Read. All the people answered with one voice, We will do everything the Lord has commanded. Let's read on. Read. Then Moses carefully wrote down all the Lord's instructions. Early, early the day this morning, yeah. Moses got up and what? Built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He also set up Twelve pillars and one for each of the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's read on. We'll get to what we are looking for very soon. You see it. Read. Then he sent some of the young one Israelite men to present burnt offerings and to sacrifice bulls as peace offerings to the Lord. What did he instruct them to do? Present burnt offerings. And to sacrifice bulls as what well, peace offering. Jesus was the peace offering for us. Now I want you to see the difference. Here is an animal, <laughs> but then to have peace with God, they had to sacrifice an animal. But with us is the man Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus, according to First Timothy two five. There's only one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, First Timothy two five. All right, so he sacrificed. He sacrificed his life. He sacrificed. He shed his blood once and for all. Amen. Shall we all say once for all? Once and there's a reason why I'm stressing on once for all. Oh, he shed his blood twice. Right. He didn't shed it three times. Right. He shed it only what? Once, oh. one time. And I'm getting to something. Those that keep saying, "I plead the blood." The slightest thing, I plead the blood. That's how unbelief, that's how much unbelief you have in your heart. You haven't seen it that way. It's true. Amen. You haven't seen it that way. Anytime you say, I plead the blood, it means that you are saying, the blood has not been working. Mm. But now I need it to work for me. Mm. So I'm pleading it. Mm. Mm. It means that the blood that was shed for you and you believe in it, you don't really believe it. That God's word is true. He said once. Once. How many times have you been saved? You are saved once. One time the blood is applied and you are cleansed. One time. And that cleansing is forever. You are never going to get unclean. You are never going to get dirty. Never. Unless you want to reject Jesus as the Messiah. That is why, if you realize, you have uh, been doing some things, like, okay, things that you ought to do, at times you don't do, you call that sin. God doesn't jump out of your life and say, now that you sin, hey, I'm clean. I'm keeping my way. Then when you repent, then he jumps back. I mean, we have to, we have to wise up and refuse some of these lies. Like I always say, anybody that genuinely is born again would not want to sin. Paul said, shall we continue in sin so grace be abound? They said, certainly not. When you are born again genuinely, what you have on your mind is not sin. What you have on your mind is love. Hallelujah. Okay, so sacrifice. Here, animals. Not just one. 
a lot moves. Okay, let's read on. Read. Moses will drain half of the blood from the animals into basins. The other half he did what? He splattered against the altar. He splattered. Okay. Let's look at the next verse. What verse is it? Six? Six. Okay, now let's read seven. Hallelujah. The, the word splatter, don't, don't, don't be afraid of it. You will realize that it's a simple thing. But it's just read it. Hallelujah. Let's read together. Read. We are still in Exodus 24, verse 7. Read. Then he took the blood of the what? Covenant. Oh, okay. Because the blood, the blood. You know, we have communion. We're talking about the covenant. He called that the blood. Hallelujah. So, sorry. Let's read again. Read. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it aloud. So let's say like I'm doing now, okay, to the people. Again, they all responded, we will all do everything the Lord has commanded. We will obey. Then verse 8. He first planted the blood on the altar. Now look at another thing. What's going to happen here? Read. The Moses took the blood from what? The basins and splattered over the people, declaring, Look, this blood confirms the covenant the Lord has made with you in giving you what? This instruction. Splattered is sprinkling. That's what it means. So let's look at uh, verse 6 first in the New King James Version. So you, you know what we're talking about. New King James Version. We are still in Exodus 24. Read. And Moses took half of the blood and put in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Why? Because that time, when you do that, that's what purification is cleansing. All right, purging. Okay. But it was the blood of animals. And it wasn't only on the altar. That's why now we don't put anything on the altar. The so-called altar people bring an offering on the altar. They are trespassing. This altar. This altar is anointed. They are referring to themselves as the altar. There's only one ultimate altar now. That altar is Jesus Christ. He became the atonement. And that's it. No preacher. It doesn't matter how awesome your saint is. It's no altar. That you have to tell people, come and put your seed on the altar. There's anointing on this altar. The anointing is everywhere now. It's in you. It's upon you. Because Jesus said in John uh, 4 Amen. to the woman, he said, the time is coming. And now it is. Amen. When people will be worshiping God, not just in the temple in Jerusalem, but everywhere. Amen. For God seeks people who worship him what? In spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it. So the presence of God is not in a particular location. Don't let anybody fool you. I grew up in this kind of teaching where you think you only have to come to the altar and then uh, the power of God will hit you. The power of God can hit you wherever you are. In your home, it can hit you. You don't have to have any special altar. You don't go and put a table somewhere and say that's your altar. Forget it. The altar is in your heart. Amen. Amen. You, you don't have to do that. And I know in some... Uh, Denominations, they have a statue that they even put in, uh, in front of their houses and in their homes too. Statue, statue representing God. When they say that you shall not have any image. What? But they are still doing it. Why? Because they don't reach such things to them. Hallelujah. So he sprinkled it. Okay, let's go to verse 8 now. So one on things, the altar, and then the next one. Let's read together. Verse 8. Read. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has what? Made with you, according to all these words. Blood seals the covenant. Blood. When he cut the covenant with Abraham, remember? He asked him to cut uh, the birds 
He divided some, put one on the left, on the right, some he didn't let him uh, cut into two. Blood. When Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says that this, uh, God covered them with what? They covered themselves with fig leaves, but what did God do? What did he do? He covered them with animal skin. The blood was shed. And that was Jesus Christ. The type of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's look at this. This was done for us. Let's look at another sprinkling. This was under the Old Testament. And every time they sinned, they had to repeat this. Isn't God merciful, loving, amazing? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's look at this. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, 19 to 20. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 9, 19 to 20. Let's do together. Read. But when Moses had spoken, every priest to all the people according to the law, he took blood of cows and goats with what? Water. Scarlet wool and hyssop. Now he's giving you the breakdown of what was being done back in the day. And sprinkle both the what? The book itself. And all the people. Can you imagine? That's bush of Blood of an animal on me. No, I don't want that. So literally, physically, this what happened for them to be cleansed. Let's move on. <clears throat> Saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Now, do you see why in Luke 22? Let's have that. Luke 22, 20, if I'm not mistaken. It says, this is the blood of the covenant. But let's read here, Jesus speaking. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Different covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ. New covenant with better promises. He entered once and for all into the holy place. He shed his blood once and for all. And that blood still has power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And what I like about this blood, it's not just for cleansing. It's not just for forgiveness of sins. But it's for deliverance. It's for your preservation. It's for your safety. Redemption. The whole nine acts. It's that blood that brought you into sonship. You are covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. These people, they were cleansed by the animal blood, but then they were filthy again. Then they have to take another, you know, animal. Take the blood and over and over and over. But in our case, once and for all. So once again, I'll say, that's why I don't say, I plead the blood. Moses was asked to strike the rock once. Right? The second time, he was asked to speak to the rock. And then he struck it. And that disqualified him. Because Jesus, the rock, when you read the book of Corinthians, he's the rock. He's to be struck only once. Not twice. And that's why we are, we are committing a spiritual word, blunder. When we say, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ be against you. Don't remind God. God knows his job. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ be against you. You are trying to remind God. You see, because you, have, you become weak in your faith. The blood is already working. So we don't need to say the blood of Jesus Christ be against you. The blood of Jesus Christ working in your life is against anything Hallelujah. that comes against you. It's against any judgment. It's against any ordination, counsel, wicked counsel, whatever from anywhere against you. The blood stands against that. Amen. That nobody can bring accusation against God's elect, which is you. Amen. Hallelujah. Every judgment, it doesn't matter how fresh it is. It doesn't matter who, uh, what authority is coming out with that judgment against you. The blood of Jesus Christ stands against that judgment. Amen. 
Because you are the bona fide property of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me let me digress a bit and show you something in the old uh, Old Testament. We'll come back to this. Let's go to second uh, second Kings chapter six. Let's start from um, verse fifteen. So it will flow. Ah, uh, you know Elijah, Elisha, and his servant. When this is what happened, the king of Syria. They will do their planting and all that to go on the offense to attack. And then somehow what they discuss in their secret chambers, then God tells Elijah, the prophet, and then he tells his people, hey, this is what is going on. They will be here. Tomorrow you watch out for this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So the king got uh, upset with all this and who is that dissident among us? Who is that when we anytime we plant and he goes to tell the king? Then somebody said, No, 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 there's no dissident. There's a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. It's Elisha. Yeah. God reveals to him all your plans, all your strategies. Yeah. So now they wanted to take uh, the life of uh, Elisha. I want you to understand the protection we have in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. The best place to be in the world is not in the USA. Yeah. It's not in Buckingham Palace. It's in the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. It's in the will of God. Amen. When you are in the will of God, you are so protected, nothing against you will work. So let's read on and see what happened. So the, um, when the servant of uh, the man of God, who is the man of God in this case? Elisha. I rose early and went out. There was an army surrounding what? The city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He saw something in the natural. People had gathered. Like the Ukrainians saw the Russians, the Italians, and what have you? He saw. It was for real. Let's read on. So he's asking the man of God a question. Let's read together. This is beautiful. So he answered, do not what? Fear. Where is it coming from? Ah, I'm just standing with you. You don't even have a sword or a javelin. Right? I know you. Some of the things you can't even lift them up. I'll lift them up for you. And me too, I don't have a sword. How are we going to fight all these people? How? But he said to him, do not what? Fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, I'm going to read it again. And I'm going to do it slowly. And please listen to it. At times you go read scripture and you don't get it. Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Do we say scripture in the uh, first First uh, John chapter 5, I get confused with that. What are 4 or 5? 5 verse 4 or 4 verse 4. Greater is he that is in me. Please check that. I don't want to go out there. Greater is he that is in me than he that is what? Can we say that? Greater is he. Is it 5 4? I know one says we are born of God. We are, we are overcome. So which is which? Is it four four or, or you are God or five four? Greater is he that is in you. Come on now. It's four four. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is the greater one in us? Yeah, by his spirit. He's the one in us. Now let me add to it. It said, Jesus said, mighty reality. Of all those that live on the earth. John the Baptist was a powerful person. But he said, the least in the kingdom of God, under the new covenant, the new covenant is greater than John the Baptist. I want you to understand these things. Now let's look at these things well. Let's go back to what we're reading. Hallelujah. For those who are with us are more than 
when Second Kings chapter six, was it four, uh, 15 or sixteen? Sixteen. For those who are with us, hi, right, good to have you. <laughs> it says, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So over here, what are we saying? In the natural, there's someone who didn't see any army. He didn't see any bodyguards. That's why I went to the master. Alas, what are we going to do? We are done. What are we going to do? But there's something that he did not see and he wasn't aware of. His protection was intact. Even though it wasn't showing in the physical, but his protection was in place. In the same way, the blood still works, the blood of Jesus Christ. It still works, even though we don't see it in the natural, in the physical, its power, its authority is still at work. Do you get it? Okay, so here, look at what Elisha did. Let's see whether he went into prayer. Let's see whether he went into prayer or he started doing some declarations or confessions, like some people say. Now, when I wake up each morning, I confess this, I confess that, I confess this, and I confess that, you know, and then I'm protected. Wrong. It means that you don't have faith in what God has said. Your confidence is not in Him. So you are now trying to do something to protect yourself. Do you get it? Okay. So then what did He do? Let's read on. Verse 16, we are still in 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's do together. Read. 17, I'm sorry. Read. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I say, open his eyes that he may what? See. This doesn't sound right. He saw that he was surrounded. And yet, Elisha, the master, prayed that his eyes must be opened. He wasn't blind. So we are talking about spiritual eyes. We are talking about perception. We are talking about understanding. We are talking about intelligence that is divine. He didn't have that. He didn't have that. He did not have that. So if you don't read the word of God, this intelligence we are talking about, you won't have it. If you don't fellowship with the Holy Spirit the way you ought to, you are not going to have this intelligence. So you always look at things in the natural, and that's why people get anxious, they get worried and overly concerned. Because to them in the natural, wow, this is it, this is it, this is it, wow, I'm going to be disgraced. They say, oh, everything is going down. And this, that, that. You get know what I'm saying? But if you know that, you know that, you know Amen. what God has already done. Amen. You are not going to be moved Amen. by what you see in the natural. I always say, any challenge against your life, you have to see it as a testimony in the making. Because God will not allow you to be tempted about what you are able to handle. Because He's faithful, the Bible says that. And with the temptation, He will make a way, the trial, He will make a way of escape. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. So which eyes? The spiritual ones I'm talking about. And he saw and behold, the mountain was full of what? Houses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what I'm saying that those who go about and they are praying. And always their focus is on the enemy. And what the enemy is doing, they don't know the protection they have. They are not aware. Because they look in the natural and then that's what they go with. David showed up. He was facing the same obstacle. He was facing the same enemy, Goliath. Their knees, I mean, were shaking. But he wasn't afraid. He was advised, don't fight this guy. He's been doing this for years. He's a veteran. You can't go against him. You are just by the board. His brothers advised him the same way. But he said, I'm going to cut off this guy's head. Where was he coming from? He knew something they did not know. He had perception, understanding, divine intelligence. His confidence was in God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why I said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. 
God is the source. And look at what happened beautifully. Let's do that. So the blood of Jesus is still working. You are heavily protected. Amen. So instead of saying I plead the blood, always thank God for the blood. Amen. Yes, that's what you do. You thank God for the blood. Amen. And I'll say, people think that when they pray, they don't say, I beg the devil and I come against this and I resist this. They think, I have prayed. This is the day I have prayed. You know, thanking God, worshiping God is a form of prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's read on. So when the sinners came down to him, what happened? Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, <laughs> Wow, strike these people. I pray with what? Blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Wow. The people that were coming against him, and look at the good thing that he did. Let's read on. When the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Leave your enemy alone for God. God doesn't say anywhere. The Bible doesn't say anywhere that you should go after your enemy. The Bible doesn't say, uh, wish your enemy evil. It says, love your enemy and do them good. When they are hungry, feed them. It says, overcome evil with good. That's what it says. Hallelujah. Leave them alone. And I don't understand why people rise up and fight against the fellow man, a fellow man, I'm talking about fellow human being. Don't do that. In my counseling sessions, I always tell people, the two of you have to come together and gang up against the problem. Don't attack each other. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is not of God. Now Elisha said to them, this is not the way. They were going somewhere. No, this is the city. Follow me and I'll bring you to the man whom he is sick. <laughs> but he led them to Samaria. Uh -huh. They came for him. You see, he has so much power, so much authority, he could even make his enemies blind. This is what you people, some Christians lack. They underrate the power that they have. The authority that they have. How they can change things. How they can speak words of life. No death. He was not leading them. You know, he could have killed every one of them. He didn't. Let's read on. So we'll finish the story. Verse 20. Let's read together. Read. So it was when they had all come to Samaria that Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that he may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And they were and, and they were inside Samaria. This was physical eyes, not spiritual eyes. Let's begin. You see how you are coming evil with good? He should have left them blind. They were coming to kill him. Huh? They were coming to kill him. And now that your enemy is in your hand, do you spare him? I know. Under the whole covenant, you say, Yes, let me kill him now. Finish him. And some people are praying these prayers. They are saying fathers should locate their own mothers. Fathers should locate their own fathers. Locate their grandmothers. No, no, not fathers. Because always they say, uh, your mother is the witch. Your auntie is the witch. Your grandmother is the witch. Never the grandfather, the father, or any uncle. This is what people are doing. They are praying against people who are coming against them to die. You don't pray that prayer. Now when the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I what, kill them? Shall I kill them? <laughs> Listen to his response. Let's read on. Read. But he answered, You shall not kill them. Wow. Would you kill those whom you have taken captive with your sword and your bow? Set food and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. This is what we say. That's Romans 12 21. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If every Christian can do this, the world will be a wonderful place. They will have a ripple effect on other folks. 
You see, worldly folks do what they do because they don't have the spirit of love in them. But you have the spirit of love in you. And he says, this is my new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And he specifically, the master said, love your enemy. And if he's hungry, feed him. And he says, bless those who curse you. Now we have pastors who can stand. Then they say, I curse you. That's what I'm saying, they are tripping. They are full of it now. How can you come against the child of God that Jesus died for? He's blessed. And join them Jesus Christ. Then you say, I'm cursing you. What offense did they commit? But when they are doing this, come we guys stand up and they, they, they cheer. They say, Amen. That's such a hard demonstration of ignorance. Let's go back to what we're reading. When in, in uh, Hebrews 9, right? Am I right? Hebrews 9. Okay. Okay. Let me jump. Now we'll still go to Hebrews. But let's look at chapter 12. Because I don't have much time. Hebrews chapter 12. Thank you, Jesus. And then the 24th verse. Let's read together. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Pause. New one, covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. That speaks better things than that of Abel. Moses sprinkled animal blood. According to Exodus, Exodus 24, 8. But here, the blood. See, this is so powerful. It didn't have to be physical. In the case of Moses, he took the blood for real, physical. He touched it. It was in the basin, sprinkled on the people. The blood touched the people. Do you get it? But this is so powerful. It doesn't have to be physical. The blood that is shed. No, it wasn't, it didn't feel like it busy, but it was so much powerful that without he dipping even his finger into the blood and touching you when you believe in his finished work, the blood has been sprinkled on you. Mm -hmm. And this cleansing power, a spiritual power, protective power, authority, everything comes to bear. On your life Amen. once Amen. and for all. Amen. The Bible says it speaks better things than that of Abel. Mm -hmm. Let's go to, um, I have to run, run it up. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and then verse 4. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay. Hebrews 11, 4. And you know that. Abel and Cain went to sacrifice in the book of what? Genesis chapter 4. Right? And God had respect for Abel's sacrifice. And uh, for his brother Cain, no, God didn't. And uh, Cain became upset and he killed his brother Abel. I'm sorry, Abel. You all know that? Yeah. Genesis 4. So that's what we are talking about here. Hallelujah. But look at this. Let's do it together. Read by faith, Abel offered to God. Wait. Abel offered to God. He offered something. What was it? A more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And Jesus Christ has also offered himself, which is a more excellent sacrifice than Abel's. His life, more excellent than an animal. More excellent than that of Abel's. Now let's read on. Through which he obtained what? Witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift. And through it he being dead still speaks. Abel, dead, still speaks. 
Can you say that Abel dead still speaks? Abel dead still speaks. Do you know Abel was a prophet? We won't go into that. But uh, Jesus Christ is a chief prophet. There's no prophet like him. If Abel, uh, what do you call it? A human being, his blood carries such weight, authority, power, that is dead and is still speaking. God was trying to tell us something. That there's one who is to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Who has no beginning and has no end. Amen. And his blood will speak better things than that of what? Hebrews. So now let's read again in closing the Hebrews 12, 24. Abel, dead, human being, Old Testament, his blood still speaks. Then look at this. Let's read it with a read. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling, that speaks better things than God. Speaks present continuous things. That's why you don't plead the blood. Once, when it's applied to you, once, when you put your trust and faith in the shed blood, it's, it's for life. It covers you for life. It protects you from destruction. The blood makes you a son of God, a child of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's what brought you into adoption. What Bible calls sonship. And God is pleased with you. His anger against you, judgment against you, is dropped. And he says, your sins, you will remember no more. Hallelujah. You are now a child. Amen. And he has tabernacle Amen. in you. Amen. He has chosen to indwell you. Amen. So that's why he says you are a chosen generation. Amen. Royal priesthood. Yes. A holy nation. Hallelujah. Peculiar people. Amen. That should show forth my praise. I call you out of what? Darkness. Amen. Into my marvelous light. Amen. The blood so speaks. Hallelujah. And if you have any doubt about your protection, remember, in the blood of Abel, Abel being dead, so speaks. How much more Jesus? Hallelujah. You see, Abel died, but Jesus was raised. He was ascended, and he was seated at the right hand of God. Where the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Is making intercession for us. The blood still speaks in your cupboard. Amen. Anything that comes against you, it doesn't matter the level, the magnitude, or what you think is demonic or diabolic, satanic. Just say, Father, I thank you that I'm covered by the blood. I thank you for the victory I have over this because of the blood. Amen. There's no need to say I plead the blood because it's already working. Just like the power of God. In Ephesians 3, 20, the Bible says, God is able to do, please put it there, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think mm -hmm. through what? His power. That is our work way within us. In, in a tabernacle in Jerusalem, no. The power is at work within us. Where? Put it there, please. Ephesians. Ephesians 3, 20. The power is at work within us. Amen. Why is it at work? Within yes. us, yeah. one of the reasons, like I'll be showing you, here, the power is in you. Amen. You are empowered, so you can be all that God wants you to be. Just like apple seed, there's power in the apple seed to reproduce after its kind. Amen. So you have power, ability to reproduce after your kind, to be who God wants you to be, and to do all that God wants you to do. And that same power protects you. Amen. You know why? The power within have come into your life. If there's no confidence, if there's no faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. it started with the blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now to him who's able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, mm -hmm. according to what? The power. The power. His power, Amen. not your power. Amen. Not your smartness, mm -hmm. but his power. Amen. That works well in, in us. us. Amen. Wow.
In Exodus 12, they mark their doorposts with the blood of an animal. And the angel of death passed over everywhere the doorpost was marked with the blood. Literally, physically, it was marked. But with us, we are marked with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Not for destruction, mm. but for prosperity, Hallelujah. for life, Amen. for victory. Amen. Ah. Hallelujah. You are precious in His sight. Don't ever, don't ever become what? Attack conscious, mm -hmm. devil conscious. Do you get it? Yeah. Become righteousness what? Conscious. Yeah. That's what you have to think about. Yeah. You are accepted and have right standing before God. God is not against me. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Many years ago, I used to think that way. Me to I wake up, my first prayer topic. I come against every demon. We're told that people speak against you and it will work. If you don't speak against that, we uh, refresh that and revoke that, nullify that, it will work. Yesterday, they will tell us that the Bible says, No weapon that is fashioned against us shall prosper. And then there is still, still, you have to nullify it. You see, so what they taught us wasn't in sync with faith. If no weapon that is fashioned against us shall prosper, because my heritage is from the Lord, my, my right is my heritage. And my righteousness is from God. I have to just thank God. Right. Devil over here, blood, blood. Enemy, mm -hmm. kingdom of darkness, working against me. If you don't prosper. So when I wake up, I say, Yay! Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm heavily protected. You get what I'm saying? But people don't do that. Now they will take the time. They suspect uh, grandma, so and so. So they say, In the name of Jesus, there's some spirit that is working to grandma against me. I come against that spirit. The gift of suspicion at work. Anybody who says something against me somewhere, I come against that. No, 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 no. It shall no work, period. Amen. So what do you say? Thank you, Father. Amen. That no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. I'm covered by blood. My life is healed in you. No man can touch me. He had in a hedge of fire around you. How much more you that you believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ? Let that say for today. And I charge you with the words in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and 13. Stand from the liberty. Well, with Jesus, the anointed one has made you free. And do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love, serve one another. Amen. Love you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God.